So welcome back sports fans to more K-Jetronic. This time, K-Jetronic Lamba. Well, you know, is there not enough? No, there's not. This one, we've got K-Jetronic, and this, with a fuel injector on the side and some pipe work, is K-Jet Lamba, or Lambda, or the Lamba sensor, or Lamba probe, which came before KE Jetronic. Now, this is absolutely ingenious is when I explain it, you'll be like, ah, amazing. So, you know, your car's running at a certain air fuel ratio, oh, needs a bit more for whatever reason. That's how it does it. So simple, and I'll show you how it does it. So we have our, what we know is our K-Jetronic, the original unit. You may have this one, which is also K-Jetronic. It's still a cast iron unit, however, on this back side, we have an extra takeoff versus this side, we don't. So what's this for? Well, it comes around, around this pipe into what this is, is pretty much a fuel injector. I mean, that's what it is. And the fuel injector is linked to the lower chamber. Now the lower chamber is our system pressure. So okay, okay, so we've got lower chamber, five bar for example, five bar on this. So why have we got five bar onto a fuel injector? Then why does this link from here on a tube into female banjo with another banjo on it? And that's the return line. This goes back to tank. So what we want system pressure back to tank and inject in the middle now it's a frequency valve now if we remember back to other videos how um ke works where we have our differential pressures between the upper and lower chambers and relevant to the dpr that sits on the side which again relevant to its current feed from things like temperature sensor all those bits and bobs and feedback from the Lamba sensor adjusts it to give more or less fuel. Well, this sort of works in the same way. How exactly it works is you have a Lamba probe which registers the um, air fuel ratio. Now, so your air fuel ratio, we want you know, your Lamba 1 or 14.7, um, which means everything that's coming out of the car is mixed nicely and it's burnt with little leftover gases. So we know from this, our air plate comes up like so, and our control pressure boop, comes in the top of here from our warm-up regulator. Once the engine is all fully warm, remember this actually only works once the engine is fully warm. So once the engine is at working temperature, this will become active once the lamber probe has got his operate, operating temperature so we're running on the road at you know cruising speed we've got our 3.5 bar control pressure keeping our air plate at a nice steady level now for some reason the lambda probe picks up that the car is lean it sends signals from a little control box so you have a Lambda probe here, a control box here, Lambda signal goes in there, this connects to the box, and this box tells that valve what to do. So, for example, the car's gone lean. This frequency valve then opens. Why would it open? So what does it do when it opens? System pressure, back to tank. So if this opens, Fuel can then, system pressure can then go back to tank. So if this opens a certain amount, this system pressure inside here, for example, will drop to 4.8 bar. So we've lost 0.2 of a bar fuel pressure. Now, how does that make a difference? Well, we've lost pressure in here, but the plunger is still moving up. It's still sat where it is. The air is still going through and the fuel still going out. So how is this going to affect? What, what difference does it make? Now, I'll bring our dummy toy over so we can mimic and see 
what we're describing. So we're driving down the road, cruising, our airplate is up, our set amount of fuel, remembering the cage it's all linear, relevant to the airplate, relevant to how high the fuel plunger goes in the body, means how much fuel comes out. And we have our diaphragm in the middle, which has an equilibrium between the middle. So if no fuel is coming on the top and the system pressure on the bottom, it's closed. As soon as the fuel pin comes up, diverts more fuel to the top, the top becomes the governing body and the bottom is not. So the diaphragm will then divert down, which allows fuel to go out the injector. So picture that's doing that now. Our diaphragm is at a set deflection with the fuel coming through out the injector. Switch fire to our frequency valve unit. The control box has told this to leak off X amount of system pressure from the bottom. What does it do then? Well, it takes the pressure off here, but the fuel volume is still going through to the top. So there's less pressure now. There's 0.2 bar of pressure less, for example, acting on the bottom of the diaphragm, which means the fuel that's going through allows di the diaphragm to deflect slightly more, which in turn allows more fuel to go back out. Remembering, even if this fuel pin's up and sending X amount of fuel through there, out the injector, the diaphragm sits at a set point. If you lose pressure at the bottom of here, that diaphragm will deflect down. Still with the same force pushing down on it, it just means it moves further and lets that bit more fuel out. So we've got a bit more fuel coming out because this has leaked off system pressure from the bottom. Now then in a couple of minutes or so, the lamp probe has picked up that the air fuel ratio is back where it wants to be. So it shuts this valve. So the valve now shuts, so there's no system pressure leaking off back to tank. So this is now back up to our five bar. So from 4.8 it's back up to five bar. So now our lower chamber has now gained an extra 0.2 bar of pressure. What does that do? Exactly the opposite of what we just described. Our pins up, our set fuel is coming out. It's deflecting the diaphragm and letting fuel come out the injector port. Now we've got extra pressure or our normal pressure back in here. That then prevents that diaphragm in the bottom deflecting as much. So the force comes back on it, which means flow of fuel coming out starts to reduce. So just to recap, the frequency valve controls the pressure in the lower chamber. When the frequency valve is open, it creates a pressure differential between upper and lower chamber, which allows the diaphragm that sits in there to open more, thus giving more fuel. So that is how our frequency valve works in basic terms. Now, how can you test it? Well, it's an injector, two pins on it, and it's very simple. Firstly, if you're not building system pressure, this could be stuck open. So one way to test that, take this banjo off, take this pipe off, put it in a bottle, put the same threaded bolt in there, not a banjo, a bolt, so it seals this closed. And then you can turn the ignition on at primary fuel pumps. With this in a bottle, if you get any fuel out of here, your injector or your frequency valve is not working because it's meant to be closed to not let fuel pass. So if it's doing that, if that is nothing coming out of there, when that's unplugged, no power to it, just sat as it is now, then statically that's fine. So you can put it back on, banjo bolt, torque it all up as it should do. And now we'll go on to some quick electrical tests on it. So how do we check that our frequency valve isn't dead. So get a multimeter, stick it on your resistance shaft for your continuity testing, where you would just to check a wire's not broken. Put the tips together. You want to hear your beeping. Now what you want to do now is one pin, another pin, boop, and just for good measure, 
There we go. So what's that just done? Well, that's just proven our electrical circuitry between one pin going in there through the coil resistance back to that pin is not broken. So we've ascertained that with fuel pressure on this side, it does not leak out of there, which is good. And we've also ascertained that our electrical circuitry inside this injector is not open circuit, means it's not broken. Next, now you need a Lambda probe on a car and you want to check when the car is warm, cold and very hot, the voltage returning back from the Lambda probe to the control box. Now, anything less than 0.5 volts feedback from the Lambda probe, yep, the Lambda probe is, is goosed, it's, it's not working. Um, anything greater than that, that's good, that's the kind of voltage you want back from it. So just going back, why have we got this, why were the frequency valves put on these cars? Mainly because this was the era of, you've gone from K-Jet, you've gone to K-Jet with a Lambda, with emissions, you have a catalytic converter on the car. So, especially on the Volvo 240s um, and the likes, you had the frequency valves with a cat. So, for example, another example, you're driving down the road, cruising along, you know, you, in an old car, you've got some oil leaks, uh, valve stem steels leaking, whatever. And the oil was getting drawn into the combustion chambers and it's not burning off, it's going through the exhaust system and it's slowly building the cat up. As we know with catalytic converters nowadays, they are they are what they are. We like them, we don't like them. DPFs are the worst, but hey ho, I digress. So the oil is slowly building up the front of that cat so the air can't get through. So our air plate's up, our control pressure is right, we should be getting a nice even Lambda equals one but we are getting a Lambda a 1.2, so we're running lean. That's when the frequency we have will pick up. Oh, hold on, we're running lean here. We need to open. So this opens, changes the differential pressure between top and bottom. Diaphragm is allowed to deflect slightly more, more fuel goes out. That fuel gets through the system and the fuel system gets to its Lambda 1, for example. So the car's all happy. This will keep doing it it's all on dwell period and minute checks over and over again. Obviously feedback from the sensor, all other stuff. I'm not going to dive into that. We're just focusing on what the difference is with these two systems. You might come across a car and go, well, that's completely different. Well, here is how it works. Simple checks. That's working. Fuel pressure comes through. We know what it physically does. Now, obviously, if you're always, get, always getting a certain reading, which is higher than book figures from... The feedback from the Lambda, again that points to something that's blocking like your cat could be blocked which is always causing this to lower this system pressure to then take into account the blocked cat, add a bit more fuel and it works up but then that is a sticking plaster for a fault. Now you might think well we got this on there what about testing system pressures? I'll show you. So here we have we need to check our system pressure so we take our pipe off there and the one that goes to the warm regulator, we connect them together and we have our gauge set up. So with a tap close, you want pipe, then a gauge, then a tap, and then this other tail end goes to the warm regulator. So with the tap closed, you run your pumps, you'll get system pressure on the gauge. You open your tap, that then gives you the control pressure. There is no difference when checking system pressure with these types. Why? Because this is shut. Without any electrical input on there, this valve is shut, like we just explained how to test it. Now, if you are testing system pressure, you go, yep, I've got five bar. Oh, hold on, 4.8 bar. Oh, four, oh, oh, I've got a leak. If you are reading it and you have got a leak down and there's no visible leaks anywhere, then again, this could be your culprit. So again, you need to take that off, block that pipe up, because obviously if you system pressure it, fuels will come out. So take this pipe off, stick that in a bottle, block this end up, then do your system pressure test again. If your system pressure is leaking down and leaking out of here, then there's your fault. So there you go, again, another metering head that's come across my wavelengths. I'm like, ah, yes. Get a video out there, get this stuff documented, 
from my point of view, explain that how I do it. Again, there's not much difference in its physical workings. All it's doing, all this valve is doing is adapting the situation. Now, how can we manipulate this? There's always a maze to manipulate it. So, you've got your car, your warm-up regulator is where it is, you've got a turbo on it or whatever reason or something, you need more fuel, but you can't adjust the warm-up regulator enough to lower that AFR. Without, after doing the other little tricks with the warm-up regulator and not just adjusting the pressure and moving that bump stop at the bottom where the diaphragm bottoms out, you can also then rig this up if you have this type of metering head. Now this metering head, if you took all this off and put a bung in the back of there, that will operate exactly the same as, well not that, it's got a hole in it, that will operate exactly the same as that one. But if you have got this type, for example, Volvo 240, and you're putting a turbo on it, or converting a Volvo 240 to a turbo, even though they do a 240 turbo, or a Porsche 924 turbo, um, you've got this on here, so you can manipulate this sensor sensor you can manipulate this frequency valve so for example stock boost is 0 0.5 bar you've got a manual boost controller if you run the boost up old school style you run in one bar of boost turbo screaming its head off sounds awesome chattering away but you need more fuel you can use this however much power is sent to that small voltage wise again to flex that plate so you can Think outside the box. You can work around this, go, right, okay, we've got the Lambra on there, blah, blah, blah. Or you might have an older car, you don't need a Lambra on it or Lambra probe on it. To be honest, you don't need to. If it passes the emissions or it's pre, what, 89, you've got, if you didn't have a cat on it, for example, you don't need a cat on it, but this is on there. Unplug that, get rid of the Lambra probe. And you can use this um, with a simple switch, a simple vi five volt switch. So system pressure is where it is, five bar, you can have this switched up to um, boost pressure sensor or switch you can buy off any anywhere. So as soon as that boost pressure switch reaches your set, um, I use one on my old Audi S4 um, for the methanol, uh, water methyl injection. Um, when the boost switch would get to 0.5 bar, that's when it started spraying the meth. You can do with this. So when you reach you know, half a bar or 8.8 bar, whatever you want to set it to, you can have that switch set up to here. So you can have a constant, uh, you know, five volt feed, half of half a volt feed from some other element. You know, you um, what are the sensors you've got? You can take the feed from loads. You can have a look. But what I'm trying to say is you can manipulate this system to change that differential pressure providing more fuel for example when you're under boost and then when you come under that boost level you know 0.5 bar stock 0.8 bar is what you've wound it up to so as soon as it hits 0.8 bar boom that activate lowers the pressure gives more fuel as soon as your boost drops below 0.8 bar switch switches off that disengages you back to normal running what i love about cage yet there's so much you can do to manipulate the systems to make it work and they're old cars, so we haven't really got to abide by your emission standards or emissions levels. Unless it's got a cat on it. If it's got a cat, you know, find a friendly MIT station. But anyway, that is uh, that is KE Jetronic Lambda, or Lambda, however you want to pronounce it. Frequency valve, simple pipes. It's manipulating the system via an input on there to move that diaphragm let the diaphragm deflect a bit more, more fuel can come out. As soon as that shuts off, the diaphragm goes back to its normal deflection. Normal running is resumed. So there you go. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.